to the second day of the NAI TCU International eLearning Conference 2018, MOOCs and Beyond. And thank you so much for showing your interest to participate uh, in yesterday's session. And also in the afternoon, uh, the concurrent sessions were uh, fully occupied. Uh, so this is a very good uh, phenomenon for uh, the participants and also the conference. Uh, normally, we on the second day, as you can see, uh, half of the participants uh, probably were busy, uh, but I hope that uh, many more will come. Uh, I have a few announcements to make uh, for today when uh, before 3 p.m. Could you please uh, fill up the evaluation form of the IEC, which is online, so you have uh, the QR code uh, behind your name tag. Uh -huh. And uh, yesterday we received only a few uh, comments. So could you please fill up more by QR code? And also the lucky draw will uh, be conducted for those who get lux. Uh -huh. So please join us. And it's very important for the organizer to uh, hear your opinion. And uh, today we have four keynote speakers in the morning session and also in the afternoon, the concurrent sessions is still going on. Uh, I would like to start by introducing uh, the bio data of our keynote speaker. Uh, uh, she's the second female keynote speaker for the conference. Uh, she received her Bachelor of Engineering in Electronic and Information System Engineering from the University of Huddersfield, United Kingdom. Her Master of Science and uh, PhD in Electronics Engineering, Communication Engineering from the University of Birmingham. She is currently the Deputy Director innovation and teaching and learning at the Center of Academic Development, University Putra, Malaysia, where e-learning, innovative teaching, open education resource, integration of technology in TNL, as well as massive open online course or MOOCs at uh, UPM is under her portfolio. Uh, she has recently been appointed by the Ministry of Higher Education starting January 2017 as the chairman of M the Malaysia E-Learning Council for Public Universities and also the chairman for Working Committee for Malaysia's MOOC. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Ayani Ismail. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello, everyone. Good morning. How are you? Right, um, a very long introduction. Um, that was um, a, a biography asked by the Secretariat uh, earlier in the year. There are changes to it, but I will let you know. Uh, my dear Associate Professor Dr. Tapani Tamitar, the Director of TCU, um, Assistant Professor Dr. Anuchai, my uh, few years friend already, uh, fellow speakers, um, colleagues from Malaysia also here. Uh, my name is Saliani Ismail, and my topic today will be MOOC 4.0, The Era of Digital Immortals. People keep asking me, why do you choose this topic? Uh, when the Secretariat actually asked me, what topic do you want to give? I've been involved in uh, uh, steering Malaysia MOOCs 
for the past four years, I've been talking about MOOCs every day for the past four years. I've been dreaming about MOOCs every night for the past four years. And I even um, conduct um, lots and lots of trainings, talking about MOOCs, technicalities, and so on, even in my sleep. I believe I speak about MOOC as well. So when the Secretariat asked what you want to speak this time, I was thinking, right, OK, I want to go a bit philosophical. I want to go a bit beyond what I used to do, which is talking about how to design MOOCs. So here it goes, the topic about digital immortality. Um, a long introduction, because I wasn't expecting the biography to be read, but just to, just to give you um, an idea where I come from. Um, I have experience in engineering because my background is engineering, and also education. I have no trainings in education. Perhaps our um, profession is the only profession that we are not trained. We are trained in our field, but we are not trained to teach, right? So, so it comes wherever you go, whatever your, uh, your background, your field of expertise is, education is your bread and butter. It has to be your bread and butter. So uh, I have with me the current chair of uh, Malaysia uh, e-learning council for public universities, Dr. Wan Zuhainis, because I was the former chair. Um, she will deliver her talk this, uh, um, this afternoon. Yeah. Um, she is also steering Malaysia MOOC now. I'm just a person with experience, but not the post anymore. So, so I can share on Malaysia MOOCs, but my point today is not to share on how we do Malaysia MOOCs, but it's more on philosophical concepts of ICT and digital education. I come from a university called University Putra, Malaysia, UPM. Has anybody been to UPM before? Yeah, I know you. <laughs> UPM, uh, at a glance, we have 100, uh, over 140 degree programs with huge and huge, huge lands. We have 3,000 hectares of main campus and branch campus in the Borneo, and more than uh, 1,700 academic staffs, and 26,000 students coming from various countries, different countries. And currently, we have 16 faculties in um, and UPM is one of the five research university in Malaysia. Um, rankings. Top 1% rank in the universities worldwide. We are not talking about rankings every day. But whatever we do, contribute to rankings. So we, we are, I am proud to be part of UPM. It is an agricultural um, at heart university. Sorry. Uh, niche areas, you can read from there. But of course, coming from agricultural university, agriculture is our main niche area. So what I'm going to do next, I just spend like six, seven minutes on introduction. I don't mind, do you mind? What I want to bring to you today, because you have learned a lot during the past one day, yesterday, about 
technicals, how to do MOOCs, and so on. So what I want you to do today is to sit back, relax, and be frightened. Um, no, I'm just joking. Just, just, just sit back and relax. Okay? Don't think too much. My MOOCs isn't finished. Don't think about how my students going to react to my MOOCs. So stop doing that, okay? For now, you can continue later. So I'm going to say this. I am happy to be here in the land of peace and prosperity. There is another way of saying that, which is that. I'm going to do a personal world record today by doing something that I haven't done before. Can you guess? Huh, yeah. I'm going to speak Thai for the first time in my life here in Bangkok. So here it goes. Michael, don't laugh. Hmm. Chen Yin Di Tai Ti Chai Ti Ni Ne Din Den Heng San Ti Pat Lai Kwam Meng Kang. I hope it's right. I hope it's correct because you can blame Google Translate for that. There is another easier way to say it. Ready? Or shall we do that again? Okay, this is an easier way to say it. It doesn't come out. The audio sound? Uh, the sound, the audio sound. Chan Yin Li Tita Yu Tini Nadin Dan Hang Santi Pab La Kwam Mung Kang. Can we play it again? So which version do you like better? My version or computer version? My version, even though I make mistakes. That's human. We can give a perfect solution but the human touch sometimes, even though we do errors, we are appreciated. It works well. Because this is a way of, um, because I just learned this last night, because I couldn't sleep, so I just learned this last night. I spent my sleep speaking Thai. This is hitagogy. Have you heard about hitagogy? This is self-determined learning. You have heard about pedagogy a lot, I believed. But hitagogy, H-E-A-U-T-A-G-O-G-Y. Hitagogy is self-determined learning. There are things that triggers in our life, th things triggers in our life to learn. And we are so determined to learn it whatever it takes. That is hyotagogy. And that concept that MOOCs actually leverage on, self-determined learners. This is one example. I keep saying this for 40 times, but when it comes to the day itself, I still make mistakes. And people love it. Okay, what I'm going to talk about, these are the things that I'm going to talk about. Global Digital Reports, Digital Footprints, Fourth Industrial Revolution, the, word, the buzzwords for the past two years, 
uh, the evolution of MOOC design delivery at least in Malaysia and what's beyond MOOC 4.0. The holy grail of genetic engineering, because I mean engineering, I would love to talk about engineering. People about, talk about immortality all over the world for years and years. We may think that this is impossible to achieve. Immortality. In some uh, cultures, immortality means you, are, you, you leave something great. You leave something good. And people talk about it for a long time after you pass away. In some religion, we do believe this. Muslims believe that if you do anything good in your life, Muslims will have awards, will receive awards after we die like rivers flowing. It's going to be non-stop. Awards. Even though um, the body may die, some part of you will exist. When I first started dwelling on MOOCs, I was looking for the motivation, perhaps, People do MOOCs because people ask you to do MOOCs. People ask you to change. But what exactly motivates innovation in teaching and learning? Global digital reports shows that the internet users worldwide in 2018 is about 4 billion up. 7% year on year, every year, every year, number of internet users. The number of social media users worldwide in 2018 is about 3 billion. Up 13%, up 13% every year. And the number of mobile phone users in 2018 is about 5 billion. So I'm going to show you this, this data. This is real data. It shows the digital around the world, the penetration of internet users, active social media users, using unique mobile, mobile numbers, and active mobile social users are increasing year by year. And Facebook is still the fastest growing social network, the fastest. Even though I, I'm not active on Facebook, I used to have Facebook. Michael, you did search for me, right? Um, I'm not active anymore because of some reasons, because I think I'm millennials, I should use Instagram. Facebook out for all people. <laughs> I'm not millennials, I'm X generation. But still, I have at least one social media. Brand actions in social that prompt consumers to purchase. Number one, being responsive. Brand actions. Why did I show you this? Because, like Mr. Dawal from Class Central has said to me this morning, Academicians lacks of marketing strategy and business point of view. I, I do agree with you. I do agree. This is, this is one of the things that I think we need to improve. In our MOOCs, MOOCs is a brand. We have a product. Why? Our product is knowledge and skills. So how are we going to give it to the students, without marketing it, I mean, it will look the same. People have knowledge all over, but why students want to learn from us? We have to do a bit of marketing. So branding, being responsive. Are you responsive enough in your MOOCs delivery? 
because that's what people want. People want that you be responsive. Promotions, providing educational content number three. So people like to learn. Sharing invest interesting visuals. Visuals in MOOCs, have you checked your MOOCs? Do you have good visuals to attract people? Um, being funny, being funny. Yesterday, the Taiwanese presented on YouTube channels sometimes. I mean, there's nothing wrong being fine. Sometimes professors are too serious. Professors are too serious sometimes. But when it comes to learning, it's okay to be fun. It's okay. Uh, offering exclusive content. Providing behind the scenes content and trash talking, trash talking, trash talking. So this is human. People do trash talking a lot, I mean, to attract attention. So maybe don't do trash talking. Do trash talking wisely. Okay? Digital audience penetration versus engagement of leading social networks. You can see Facebook way, way, way up. Average monthly minutes per visitor and reach among age 18 and 34. If you are not between 18 and 34 and you don't have Facebook, that is okay. But if you are 18 and 34, you don't have Facebook, you might want to check again. Huh? Uh, so it shows um, average monthly minutes per visitor. Facebook way, way high. Average interactions per post per 1,000 followers in social networks. It's not Facebook, it's Instagram. Although everybody has Facebook, but the highest interactions happen in Instagram. You have everything in your MOOCs, People got to your MOOCs, 200,000 students per MOOC, but how many interactions do happen in your MOOC? You have 100 students in your MOOCs, but you have the highest interactions in your MOOCs. So how do you measure that? Numbers. Having many students does not mean interaction happens. Having less students does not mean interactions do not happen. Why did I show you the slides of, like five slides on statistics on um, social media? Why? Because I want to show you that people not just living in this world, they have another world that they are living in. They have another um, virtual world. That is digital world. All these um, statistics shows that people live online too. So when people live online, it becomes more and more complicated. They fall in love online. You see, the most popular hashtag, the last point on Instagram are hash love. Hash me cute. Hash me hash cute. Hashtag. Hashtag cute. And hashtag follow. So hashtag love, people fall in love online nowadays. And people show affections online. That means people live. When they live, they need tools to live. The similar things that we are doing now, instead of reading on Facebook, last time we used to read newspapers, but now, um, newspapers are not that popular anymore. People go online. 
So food and drink and technology are the most popular categories for men. Is it true? Michael, food and drink and technology. Food and drink? Oh my God. I thought World Cup would be the first, I mean, football would be the most popular one. Uh, YouTube, uh, I, I just list all, you just, you, we just need to see um, that people uh, do, um, do video recordings and viewings. Say, um, I want to take one statistics. Males are primarily, prim primarily watching soccer or strategy games. Females are primarily watching beauty videos. So, could be true. This is true. This is real data. Digital footprints. All the stuff that you have seen on the list for the past, I mean, uh, in, the, in the previous slides, shows that all the stuff that you leave behind in digital form. Every time you use internet, Comments on social media, Skype, app use, email records is part of your online history and it stays there. And this might remain online forever. You may delete it. You may delete what you have posted, but remember the servers still keep it if they want to. So it's already there. The more you use the internet, the, more, uh, the bigger your footprint is. So here's the concept of digital immortality. Since you leave behind footprints, your presence online, digital presence, this is what we call the concept of digital immortality. Dr. Ian Person uh, mentioned that we will not only link by a computer system in 2050, how many years more? We will be living inside an Android shell when we do. Human consciousness will be uploaded to online service and we will able to use any Android body, not Android Samsung, um, to inhabit the real world. This is Dr. Ian Person, a futurist and engineer. Artificial intelligence engineers. When I did my first degree in electronics engineering 20 years ago, I learned about artificial intelligence. 20 years ago, doing program, uh, uh, we did programming uh, a program using a software called Prolog. At that time, I still remember the first activity that my lecturer gave to me to us at that time is to decide. Let the program decide who wants to date who. Dating system. So we have a trait of a male, we have a trait of female, the preferences, and we did a program to choose. It's a dating system. And from then on, I keep dating the wrong persons. But I did marry the right one. Right. So the things that you do 20 years ago, you still remember. Now we are talking about artificial intelligence again. It's even more advanced. Can you play the video, please? I want to show you this. Sorry,我们尽力了。不过，有个好消息要告诉你们，现代医学技术很发达。我们使用最新的高科技，降低老公大脑里的意识的数字化，完整的转移了出来，也就是说你老公其实还活着。你说啥？老公，金鹤，你们一定要好好的活下去啊！谢谢你医生，谢谢，谢谢。
PM X2 手机，双重防水，万无一失。打开防水塞，依然防水。骁龙八核心处理器，六 G RAM， 一百二十八 G， 超大空间，双摄像头，零点二秒指纹识别，强悍性能令你高枕无忧。AGM。Didn't stop there. 老公，你看这里的景色多美呀！快，让我拍几张照片。好。哇，好漂亮！哟哟哟，这不是静静吗？老婆，她是谁呀、啊？是是。哼，听说你嫁人了，怎么也不告诉我一声啊？你老公呢？哦，这就是你老公吗？我去你的！揍他丫的！老公，别担心，我不但防水，我还防摔呢。嗯，是吗？那你会游泳吗？哎，你别把我扔下去啊！走你！哼，就让你老公永远都待在江底的泥沙里吧。老公啊！老公！别担心，我会游泳。AGM X2 手机，防水防摔还能防尘，独有水上漂技术，安装原厂漂浮块，落水即漂，永远不沉，令你高枕无忧。AGM。Hey, this is the only、um, movie clip, a very sad one, but you just keep laughing from the beginning till the end. Um, kudos to the Chinese advertisements.、Uh, I mean. Thai's has been.、Uh, I, I love to see Thai's、uh, Thai video advertisement videos or short videos because it send messages, very deep messages. I've seen that, and this is the marketing power. This is what it means by digital immortality.、Um, it can be、uh, knowledge can be transferred, but it shows that. Feelings can be transferred too. We don't know whether it's true or not, but people are thinking along that line.、Um, you don't, may, you may not want to live forever, but you may want to leave a legacy. So we'll see how it goes. But this is where the future is going. People wants to have mind uploading. What's on your mind? Where is this question pop up every time? Did you even read? What's on your mind? Where have you seen this question before? You haven't. What's on your mind? Where do you see this? If you have six hundred people in the room, then they haven't seen this question anywhere. Facebook, yes. Every time you want to post something, Facebook will ask you what's on your mind. You post without reading it. <laughs> so, so it, that is not something on your mind, perhaps. But Facebook asks this every time: what's on your mind? And this is the trend in 2050 that we will,、um, that、uh, scientists, engineers, genetic engineering has looked into mind uploading, this digital ascension. This is mind blowing. What if science made it possible to be truly immortal? And what, what if there were a way for you to live? Maybe we'll just dump our memories, thoughts, feelings. If it can be done, everything else that makes us who we are into a computer and live in cyberspace like Logong, 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 Logong. <laughs> so, this is what we are doing actually in social media. We are uploading our thoughts. We are uploading our videos. We 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 upload everything without reading what's on your mind. It comes naturally to us to share. This is scary, is it? Scary. 
Um, okay. The fourth industrial revolution, if you don't know about fourth, in, I think Thai 4.0 uh, address a lot of this industrial revolution like Malaysia, we have education 4.0. And fourth industrial revolution mainly based on second information revolution where you have intelligence, artificial intelligence coming in, clever and more clever computers, uh, big data, internet of things. Internet of things is one of my field, research field now. And you have cloud service everywhere. So you combine all these, you have the second information revolution. This is fourth industrial revolution. And there are four pillars that I choose as the uh, main concerns. Or oh, five minutes, I don't have time. But I go very fast. Personalized, predictive, preventive, and participatory. These are the four things that you might want to see when you create your MOOCs. Artificial intelligence is everywhere. It's everywhere. Uh, the thing that we want is natural intelligence too, but artificial intelligence is taking place, but don't worry, it won't override natural intelligence of human. T um, attention span. Millennials, we pay attention for 30 seconds and then our brain moves on to something else. This is true. 30 seconds. You just look at me, look at my show, and then you just forgot me. Personalized learning. This is very much related to MOOCs. Flexible learning pathways, digital literacy, seamless learning, self-regulated learning, learning-oriented assessment, learning-oriented assessment. When you do assessments in MOOC, you don't want to do assessments all the time for every topic. You just choose which one you want to assess appropriately. Lifelong and life-wide learning. This is the personalized learning. But with being massive, massive means so many people, so many personality. So how are you going to do that to address personalization. This is what we do for Putra Mook, University of Putra Malaysia's Mook. We, are, we, we, are, we were the first one, the first uh, public university to launch our Mook. This is a rhizomatic model of learning where you have even one single video, it will grow. It's organic. The knowledge will grow. Even though you think that the lecture videos are not good, perhaps it will grow to other forms of knowledge. This is 1.0, the first version when we first started four years ago. And we leverage blended learning using MOOCs. Evolution of MOOC design and delivery in Malaysia. MOOC 1.0, we just convert our contents into digital forms. And MOOC 2.0, we have started to develop our uh, own contents, original contents, use, and repurposing open educational resources. This is embedded in our uh, national e-learning policy that we have to create um, our original contents. You can use OER, but we contribute OER as well. And the MOOC 3.0, this is mainly, uh, this is where we are, most of uh, MOOC developers are now. Original e-content plus OER plus user-generated contents plus task-based learning. You give um, more active learning into it. You inject actions, you in inject tasks. People do work online. And, and uh, user-generated contents, that means you are not the only one who generate contents, but your students too. MOOC 4.0, with all that, plus challenge-based learning, students love challenges, uh, gamification, at inject fun to it, crowdsource contents, that means you ask other people outside of your 
uh, students boundaries to produce contents to contribute contents learning analytics and now we have started with augmented or virtual reality in our MOOCs MOOC 4.0 has not trickled down to all lecturers yet but there are people, the drivers, are already doing augmented reality. For example, you want to teach about natural resources like uh, turtles, so you might want to have augmented reality in your MOOCs that shows turtles swimming creatively. You can just put videos, but students love augmented or virtual reality. This is what we call, sorry, what we call immersive learning. At the end of the day, when you say immersive, it's beyond active. Active you do, but immersive you forgot about the time. You, you are so immersed into it that you just, you just love it. Having experience in MOOCs taught me about learning buffet. You see the increase in terms of contents. Learning buffet means you have. You, you can give anything, but the students will choose. But be careful with it. When you give too many things, the student will think that you will do everything. So I just flashed this because my time is up. But what I have said for the past uh, 45 minutes, perhaps, 40 minutes, that these are all the things that might go beyond. You can create digital immortality by doing MOOCs, and you are perhaps knowledge immortals. Live streaming is coming back. People love live streaming. So you can see the statistics there. And last but not least, this is what I want to convey. The goal is not to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. Your MOOCs, people learn, apply what they have learned for life, and then pass it on to others. And that's what I believe immortality is all about. So thank you very much. Hope to see you again. Thank you, Dr. Yanni, for your uh, inspiring presentation. Uh, do you have any questions to ask the speaker? Okay, just one question, please. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. And I'm very glad that I, I have two things with you. The first one is that you are the engineering. And then today you're talking about artificial intelligence, right? Yeah. And my question yesterday was about artificial intelligence. And I asked the professor from the uh, Stanford University. And my opinion is that the MOOC is about creating multimedia. And beyond, I asked him yesterday that what this artificial intelligence can apply to MOOC, and today, you give me the answer. You're talking about the VR, talking about the AR, talking immersive learning. I think in the near future, we will have an AI teacher, and that's what I want to see, and I'd like to ask you for your more, uh, more um, opinion on this AI teacher in the future. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, in my opinion, now, as of now, I would rather have artificial intelligence as a support for my teaching in the sense that I get uh, learning analytics data. Instead of teaching, I can teach. I have natural intelligence, I have actual intelligence, AI too. But I see artificial intelligence as, 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 as a tool to give you um, many kinds of data that humans are normally um, restricted to do. If I look at somebody, I look at Michael, for example, here. Michael has been my experiment 
subject. I look at Michael, I can interpret Michael, it, the things that I know about Michael. But artificial intelligence can do more than that. Artificial intelligence can connect things, connect knowledge, connect information that, that normally humans cannot do. But we, uh, the, the, the way to use the data, the learning analytics, it's up to humans, it's up to the lecturers, it's up to the instructors. You may use it well or you may interpret it wrong. All the things that artificial intelligence give is data. And trying to predict is part of pillars in fourth industrial revolution that prediction is one of things. You may predict, but it may or may not happen. For having artificial intelligence robots to teach you, it can be done. It's, it's, uh, computers, computers are artificial intelligence and they are teaching us. But the thing that we are talking about now is values and wisdom. Professor Zoraini, wisdom. Where is the wisdom? Can you program wisdom? So that's my take on artificial intelligence. I love artificial intelligence, it's part of my job, but I'm not expecting artificial intelligence to do our job. Thank you.